hello and welcome to a new episode of uh, Pat's Chat. Uh, today I have uh, Jimmy Lee with me. Hi, Jimmy. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I've been listening to your show for quite some time, so quite a privilege and honor to be invited and have a chat with you, actually, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think the, the honor is really mine. Um, you just uh, made it second time to the 100 most inspirational LinkedIn icons in Malaysia. Also, you're yep. uh, on the list of 100 uh, greatest leaders in Asia. Uh, many right. more uh, rewards and recognitions and uh, of course you're the the CEO co-founder of many uh, companies mostly related to food uh, right. that's awesome so you uh, inspire us and make us hungry every day with your uh, uh, posts on LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the awesome food that you that you really share um, so so thanks a lot and again many thanks for uh, making it time today thank so, you Patrick all right yeah, so uh, let's 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 start. Um, as I said, yeah. you're you're Mr. Food for me. Uh, awesome food. Right. You just told me you're uh, yeah. from from Penang originally. Uh, that's right. where you where you grew up, um, right. and eventually well, you you came to KL. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I figured out that uh, food is maybe you, your nowadays business, uh, but your background is more in law. You studied law. How how uh, did that happen? Well, quite simply, I mean, uh, I studied law because I was a very idealistic guy, you know, I, I thought that, uh, well, primarily I thought that uh, law can change the world, you know, basically. So I studied law, uh, I graduated in law from University of Malaya, a local university. Mm -hmm. uh, then I started going into um, a going to for like an internship, I went to a law firm, started to see how lawyers work and everything like that. And, and then I realized it's just not for me. So it's just not kind of lifestyle I wanted. And I, I realized that uh, when they say justice is blind, literally justice is blind. So it's not really the merit of the case and stuff like that. So there's a lot of issues why I didn't want to be a lawyer. So I'll leave it to um, cut it aside. So the next step I did was that uh, a friend of mine, he invited me to join a, a video production company. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting. You know, you, you start off an idea, then you develop a script, then you shoot the video, you edit and then you have this like this video that's this ready. Yeah? I, I just fell in love with the whole process and I just said, Oh my god, this is this is something I'm really passionate about. And I just wanted to go into it. So right after that, right after graduation, with no experience, with no network, with no money whatsoever, just a just a law student, I decided to set up my first startup, which is actually called a uh, motion effect studio. So we do uh, video production, uh, we do animation and stuff like that. And later on, we actually went towards like augmented reality and holographic projections and stuff like that. So that's how I started in startups. Wow, that's that's uh, awesome. Yeah, for me, it's uh, quite difficult to to understand sometimes how how this really happens. I mean, you invest a lot of time in studying something. You you finish yeah. your study, right? But uh, yeah. well, then after studying, uh, go in a, in different uh, different direction. So you added the uh, video editing to that. Um, yeah. So we're still far from the food business. Uh, let's take a little bit right. to the to to this uh, past, and uh, I think. You shared a, an awesome story in, in LinkedIn, which you called the, the Starbucks story. I think that was right. a couple of years ago, 2015, but it tells basically a story back right. into 2007, I think. Uh, right. And you're explaining that like you, you had this business running that was really uh, awesome. Uh, you had a huge projects coming in. You were a millionaire at right. the time. And then right. the year... After that, everything broke down. You, you basically went to zero within uh, one year. Yeah. Well, Patrick, basically, I mean, just to continue my story, Motion Effects Studio, it was a very small startup. We started off from a bedroom, just me and my co-founder, the two of us. And we grew the business in a, in a very huge way. I mean, uh, within four years, we started to get um, contracts uh, worth one million and above. And uh, we actually landed a huge project. And um, to do this project, we have like two other business partners, two other companies that are working together. Um, the first year was okay. I mean, we did well. I mean, I, I, on paper, at least I was a millionaire. So I was really happy. I was actually looking for a house to buy at the time. It was like a really <laughs> great time for me. Um, but there came a point in time whereby one of my business partners got a little bit greedy and he invited me for a meeting and he told me not to invite the other business partner. There's the two of us, two companies talking about this. And he wanted my support and my signature to remove the other partner. Uh, in return for more money for the project. So it was like, okay, Jimmy, you know, uh, I need to sign this termination letter. And with this, with your support, I'm going to give you one million ringgit ex extra additional from the project. 
And I felt, me and my business partner, we felt it was wrong mm. to do this and we decided not to do it. Yeah. And of course, now the other business partner, he, he focused on destroying my business, which he did. He destroyed my business, but we didn't. And oh. okay. So I lost everything. Yeah. So because like, um, I mean, he got hold of my staff and everything like that. They didn't turn up for work and stuff like that. So it was a horrible time. I lost everything. Um, uh, my car was almost repossessed three times by the bank. Uh, I lost my apartment. I lost my, my office and stuff like that. Um, but in, in one of those things, and when I was going through all this, I was supposed to have a meeting with someone in Starbucks. You know? So it was the very first meeting with him. Uh, I only know his name. It's a friend of a friend, you know, because he had that, hey, Jimmy, you know, I got a friend doing this, you're doing this, you know, why don't you meet up and then maybe you guys can talk about doing <laughs> That's how together. things start, said, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how things start, man. I was like thinking, oh, I'm like, okay, because I wasn't the right friend of mine because that particular morning when I was supposed to meet him, um, the Shah Alam High Court sent bailiffs to my office. They, they basically, what they do is they lock up the entire office, you know, so you can't mm -hmm. go in and then they put the piece of paper that they say, okay, wow. you need to come up with a certain sum of money within two weeks. If not, they're going to sell off or everything in the office okay. so my, 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 my mind was not in the right place i was disturbed i was i remember i was feeling dizzy at the same time i think my blood pressure was over the roof and stuff like that um but i decided to go to the meeting i told myself i got nothing to lose you know let's just go to the meeting let's see what this deal is about and everything like that so i went to the meeting but the patrick you know the, the first thing that he asked me during the meeting is a it's an ethical question again because he asked me how's business how do you answer that question all right mm -hmm. i mean I went to the meeting for the single purpose of getting a contract with him or at least to, to get some money into the company you know, so I can pay off all these debts and loans. But at the same time, I tell him the truth, he's not going to give me a contract because you know, he'll know I'm in financial ruins and stuff like that. So the, it's more like to tell him the truth or to lie to him and hope for the best. You know? So um, I decided to tell him the truth. I told him everything what happened to me in, in my business and I told him everything. And I, and I was prepared to just leave the meeting because I, I told myself, I, I don't, I'm quite sure he's not going to give me any contract whatsoever. Uh, but the most funniest thing happened, I mean, he did not say no to me whatsoever. He just wrote down his address on a napkin and then he just told me that uh, come over to his house later that night and he may have a solution for me, you know. So I went to the meeting with him and I was thinking to my mind, you know, okay, I mean, is this going to be a loan shark? Is this going to be a loan? Am I going to get myself into more trouble here? Yeah. Um, and he made me a very interesting proposal, Patrick. I mean, he told yeah. me that um, I'm going to give you, because he asked me, I mean, how much do you need at this particular time for your legal problems and everything? I told him I basically need about 28,000 ringgit, you know, just to settle the, lot, the court case and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he told me this, I'm going to give you 40,000 ringgit if you can solve a riddle for me. So I was like surprised. <laughs> I was like a mix of emotions and everything like that, you know? So because I didn't know whether it's a joke, is this guy serious, you know, <laughs> yeah. or everything like that. So there was a lot of emotions going on, but, um, but I, I tried anyways, because I got nothing to lose, you know? I, I tried yeah. to find the answer to the riddle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I found the answer by watching a cartoon show of all things. You know, it's like two weeks of trying to find the, the answer. And of all places, I found the answer in the cartoon show. It was on Astro. It was a children's animation show. And I, I, I was like, looking and I said, oh my God, is this the answer? You know? <laughs> yeah. So I called him up for a meeting the next day. I said, okay, uh, I gave him the answer. And a uh, moment of truth is whether, will he turn up for the meeting or will he just say, okay, Jimmy, you know, this is just a joke. I just wanted to inspire you. There's, not, there's no money involved. You know? I hope you, you, you do bad in business. How you recover from this and stuff like that. So the positive sign is that he turned up. And the second positive sign is the fact that he wrote me a check on the spot for 40,000 ringgit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I cashed the check the next day and then um, I've been using the money to, to rebuild my life and stuff like that. So that's how I went to food business because after like a couple of like, uh, we settled all the debts, all the loans and everything like that. We had no money left. Mm -hmm. And uh, my business partner, Adeline, she can cook. I you know uh, she's the co-founder of, of, of Motion Effect Studio. She can cook. So she suggested, why don't we start a food business? And I told her, we don't have money, all right? We're back to square one. We have no money. We paid off all the, most of the creditors. We have no money. Uh, we don't have money for shop. We don't have money for stall. You know, how are we going to do this? And so she, she suggested, you know, um, I cook, you deliver. <clears throat> you, you, you still have the car, so you just deliver. I mean, I was like, okay, let's do this, all right? So, yeah, that's how Yamilichi started in uh, 2011. <laughs> Okay. We started as a, as a coney dog. We started selling pies and coney dogs and stuff like that. So we, yeah. we basically went to Damansara. We started delivering the, the neighborhood around there. 
So the food was really good. I mean, we're getting a lot of good reviews and comments and stuff like that. Uh, even Jamie Oliver gave us a very interesting tweet, you know. Yeah, so we got a yeah, tweet so that, like, yeah, wow. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Like, Whoa. Yeah, Jamie <laughs> Oliver tweeted us, you know. Uh, so yeah. it was cool. And then we built the business. And that's how we started in the food business, you know. So we went to burgers, we went to, you know, and then we managed the restaurant at one point. And then from there onwards, we moved on to Foodie Box in yeah, yeah. 2000. Yeah. Wait, wait, let me, let me quickly interrupt you because this goes too fast. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, basically, uh-huh. th- that is the question that everyone will be asking also. Um, right. What's the riddle about? I mean, I, I saw like in the comments, like, ah, I don't want to share it like online, but well, you share it maybe one one. Isn't that a good chance uh-huh. to, to share it here on, uh, on my show today? Ah, uh, interesting question, huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, I think I, I can share it with you, okay? Uh, that's awesome. Uh, the question, all right, for the riddle that was asked to me was, he asked me, what does people like um, Mother Teresa, Steve Jobs, and Buddha have in common? Steve Jobs, Mother Teresa, and Buddha. Have in common. Oh, what they have in common, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, so. and uh, okay, maybe maybe the solution uh, we don't we don't disclose it here. Uh, everyone can uh-huh. think uh, himself. Maybe get in contact with uh, you and discuss about that. Uh, yeah. And uh, well, the the hint <laughs> to solve that is obviously to watch uh, uh, like uh, the anime on uh, Astro to find the solution. That's interesting. Yeah. I will think about that. I will think about that. But, but Patrick, thanks, the one thing I'll say so is much for one thing I'll say with this. Yeah. Yeah. No worries, no risk of sharing. But one, one thing I'll say is this. If you find the answer to that, to that riddle, it will give you focus for the rest of your life. Because when I found the answer, it really opened up my mind to possibilities, to, to, to think outside the box and not to be afraid, you know? Because, you know, you, you imagine, you know, you, you walk to Starbucks, you were expecting a meeting and, and you were prepared to, 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 be, to be rejected, you know, because you're telling someone that you no longer have an office, you don't have an apartment, mm-hmm. you don't have money. And I even told him, you know, I only have five ringgit in my wallet at the time, you know. That was all I have, you know. So, obviously, I was prepared to be rejected. Then he gave me this riddle. I got 40,000 ringgit, you know, and I paid off everything. So, and the answer to the riddle actually set me, gave me the foundation not to give up. And actually gave me the focus to keep on trying and looking forward to the future. Because right after that, I mean, my mom told me, my friends told me, hey, Jimmy, you know, look for a job, you know. Forget about startups for the time being, you know. Uh, you need to stabilize yourself. You need to pay the rent. You need to, you know, get your life back in order. And you know what, Patrick? I didn't do that. You know, I struggled. I mean, there are moments, there were days, I mean, uh, I didn't have money for food and there were days whereby, you know, we just get by. And I, I still remember there was one meeting I went to whereby, you know, um, I was so hungry because I'm not e- eaten for quite some time and my stomach was rumbling in the meeting. It was so loud, you know? And then my, the person I was having a meeting with actually thought it was his PC because it was like asking me, hey, Jimmy, what's that sound that grew, 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 grew you know, grow, grow, grow it? Is that my PC going on? I was like, I was like, I was like smiling. I just said, it's okay. Your PC is fine. You know, it's just my stomach. I haven't had breakfast. But, you know, reality is I've not had something to eat for like two, three days, you know. So that's why I was, I was uh, my stomach was rumbling. But the thing is, despite everything, the, 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 the bank were calling me, you know, I lost my everything. I wanted to stay on entrepreneurship. And the answer to the riddle will give you that focus that you need. Okay, awesome, awesome. I think uh, myself, everyone else uh, listening to that will, will really think about this. And yeah. uh, well, I think you're open to talk with everyone who comes up with an interesting solution also. Yeah, but we, I don't have the 40000 though, so yeah. yeah. Be- <laughs> okay, the money is like, okay. <laughs> money is not there, so you know. <laughs> That's okay. I, I think the answer is, uh, is beneficial enough to not need the, the 40K in addition. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, the, okay. the answer will give you that, that, that focus and the, 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 that fire and the passion mm-hmm. to do awesome. the chase after your dreams i'm sure very yeah. nice very nice okay uh, let's go back to uh, you malicious uh as you just yeah. mentioned before you started it in yeah. uh, 2011 i think yeah. and yeah. um what also is like it's focusing on asian burgers like is it all food or is it like asian burgers well we started with coney dogs and stuff like that uh, which was doing very well but uh, we wanted to do burgers because uh, well, we love burgers, you know. Um, <laughs> so we wanted to be a bit more different because everyone was like serving this, the usual cheeseburger and a chicken mm. burger, you know, and stuff like that. So we wanted to focus more on Asian burgers. 
So we came up, I mean, we have our own burgers. I mean, uh, we came up with like, for instance, like uh, we have our best sellers, actually the chili, tra- uh, chili crab burger. So it was really nice. I mean, we, we, we use actual crabs, not the one in frozen in the supermarket. We, we buy crabs and then we pick up the meat and then we make it into a patty. And then we have our own chili crab sauce. And then we actually have our own green tea buns, you know. So it was like really nice. It's green and then you have that red in the middle. And then we also have the, the, the Vader burger, you know, it's like actually made of a chicken patty with, you know, like a katsu sauce, the Japanese curry sauce and stuff like that. So it's like um, charcoal buns with a chicken, uh, chicken fried patty with the, the katsu curry, uh, Japanese curry sauce with the sauce and stuff like that. And we have like a Korean burger as well and stuff like that. So it was doing so well, you know, so it was like really, really nice. And yeah. um, that's how we started growing the business yeah. to doing more stuff and stuff like that. But well, basically um, you started then, with the delivery you said, so you didn't have your restaurant. Yeah. You started with like uh, going out and deliver the burgers to home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then, yeah just, just going out, delivering burgers to people, talking to people. And yeah, I think we would have, I mean, I mean, of course, I mean, Pizza Hut already uh, doing deliveries at the time, but we were like, I guess, you know, we, we started this culture of independent delivery food business, you know, back yeah, in 2011. Yeah. Yeah, 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 awesome. Yeah, before like, Grab and uh, Food Panda was there, right? You did that already. Yep, yep. This is way, <laughs> way before them. This is way before them. You know? So <laughs> you, were, you were pioneering the, the, the food delivery business from an independent kitchen. Yeah, yeah that's how we started in food business. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, that's awesome. And then uh, a few years ago, you, you added a second company um, yep. that was called the Foodie Box. Um, yeah. This one was uh, okay. I, I let you explain more. What what uh, what was the difference to you malicious uh, with Foodie Box? Well, basically, okay. Um, in two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen, um, your malicious was engaged to manage a restaurant or rather a cafe in the Mansara Heights, and uh, it was a it was a great experience because you know doing delivery is one thing, but when you're running a kitchen, it's a different thing. It's a whole new ballgame because. You know, for delivery, you can, you know, people place an order, you can, okay, you can have time to prepare, stuff like that. But for a restaurant, it's like people come in, they want to eat, that's it, you know. So there was not much time to prepare. But one of the things I observe about people coming in for food is the fact that um, people were looking for something more. I noticed as a trend, this is way back in 2015, that people wanted food as more instant. You know, basically, people, uh, our lifestyle is more hectic these days. You don't have time for food. You know, sometimes even though you have a one-hour lunch meeting or lunch hour, but you don't have that much time these days. You know, you just have like maybe like half an hour. You know, sometimes when you walk to go to the cafe, or whatever, and then you sit down and you got to find a table and stuff like that. It's a lot of hassle. Sometimes you just want to have a quick meal, or sometimes um, late at night you're at work and then you're like, oh god, I, I miss dinner. It's already ten thirty. All the shops are closed. You know, and and then when you look at your option, it's always the mama or the fast food, you know, which is not healthy. Yeah. So I wanted an option whereby, you know, okay, so, we're, so now we have this market. We have this one market whereby people are eating healthy food. I mean, uh, maybe like something really more healthier, something like poke bowls or something like salad and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of price spectrum, these are really expensive, 20 to 30 ringgit for a meal, all right? And then at the bottom of it, you have people who are, just want a quick meal, they don't want the fuss and stuff like that. So they end up with junk food, fast food, you know. So I saw a middle ground between the healthy and the junk food and the price factor. Somewhere in the middle, mm-hmm. um, which I saw an opportunity, which is actually a market for affordable, healthy, fast food, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I went into it. So I called it Foodie Box. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so Foodie Box started in 2016 because I had this vision of providing um, healthy, fast food which is mm-hmm. like no hassle. You can just get the meal anywhere, wherever you may be. And, and basically, it's uh, some sort of like a pack food or something like that. So you just add in hot water and then it's cooked on its own. And then it's all made completely from natural ingredients, you know. So oh, we have okay. stuff like biryani, we have stuff like fried rice, stuff like that. So it's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. That, that is what makes it healthy, right? Because like I, I just mentioned before, like either you have like yeah. a healthy food or you have fast food. But now uh, you yeah. came up with healthy fast food, which is like well, yeah. <laughs> something something new, right? Or people need to yeah. trust in that first, right? They might yeah, be yeah, very yeah. suspicious about that. Well, basically, like I said, I mean, the, the first skeptic was me myself because, I mean, <laughs> is, this, is this possible? Can it be done? So what I did was, Patrick, is the fact that uh, I took a leap of faith. I went to India, actually. Um, I went to India, I went to okay. Chennai actually, this town, because there was, I read in a magazine that this, um, there's this factory that's doing amazing stuff. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to check out the, 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 the samples and everything like that. And, and it blew my mind, Patrick, that India is beautiful, it's vibrant. 
uh, I made a lot of friends in India and I connected the investors, the, the ecosystem, the startup and everything like that. And then I realized, wow, you know, that there is a way to make food that's healthy and also delicious and affordable. So I came back and then we just developed the business model, the business plan and stuff like that. And also I just said, okay, let's do this. So now we have about, um, we have not launched yet, Patrick, you know, we're still working on the website and we're still fundraising at the moment, but we have about 40 to 50 products that we have in, um, in under Foodie Box that we're ready to launch once the website is ready. So okay. basically um, nice. Foodie Box is yeah. a nutshell, it's something you can eat in less than eight minutes, in less than 10 minutes, you know, whatever okay. it may be, you know. Okay. And the food can last to between one to two years. So you don't have to worry about, oh, you know, it's going to perish or something like that. So it can yeah, last yeah. for one to two years. Wow. And the most amazing part is it tastes really amazing. It tastes like something that comes from the kitchen. It doesn't taste like something that came from uh, yeah. some sort of like a fast food place or some sort of like it's frozen or whatever. It just tastes really amazing, you know. So just, we're going to launch. We're going to launch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, I just want to to make the point. Is that also like uh, the involvement of like this uh, edible uh, packaging that you that you showed? I think few few days ago. Oh, for basically, you that, is that connected? That, that's yeah, that, that's that's not connected, but it's something oh. that we developed. In the I'll, I'll get to that a bit later. Okay. So it's actually <laughs> where we, uh, the process that we use is called dehydration. Actually, um, mm. so what do we do is that when we cook the food, you know, so it's like fried rice. Right? What we do is we, we dehydrate the food. So what we do, we, we remove the water from the food. So it stays in a dormant form. Well, because of that dormant form, it can last between one to two years, you know. So when you add in hot water, it okay. cooks on its own once again. So all the stuff, all the carrot, all the chicken and stuff like that cooks on its own. And when you open up the food after eight minutes of cooking, voila, you know, it's just a complete meal, you know. Okay, yeah. okay, awesome. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, so we have developed some sort of like a very Asian menu. And I don't want people to be bored of eating one type of food. Sometimes people are like, oh, you know, is it going to be this again? You know, so uh, we have food for five countries at the moment. So you can have, so that it's the, 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 the fun part is that you can wake up, you can have something for Japan, just Japanese food. And then in the afternoon, you can have something from Malaysia. And then at night, you can have something from India, you know. And wow, this food, awesome, yeah. yeah, came from these countries. Yeah, so it's mm. very authentic in terms of taste and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, very diverse. Also, so we can have something yep. uh, healthy, fast food, uh, different yep. every day. Yeah. Every day. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Cool. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, so. Yeah. Sorry. Go on, Jimmy. Yeah. So going back to the question later on, right? That you were asking about the packaging, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Maybe you can share a little bit about that. I think it's, it, it, uh, I just saw it like in the last few days that you uh, mentioned yeah. about that. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we started as a food company, um, but in the uh, last year, I mean, uh, we, we were, we were, we were given opportunity. We, we've been fundraising since last year, since November, actually. So there was a, a VC that, uh, interested to give us a substantial amount of money, which I'm not going to tell you how much, you know, so if they're interested. And uh, they wanted to be in the sense that, okay, this will, should cover you for the next 10 years, you know. So I want you to lay out the plan of what you're going to do for Foodie Box in the next 10 years. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of money. So of course, we need to do more than that. So basically, what I did was, uh, we decided to rebrand Foodie Box, instead of just a food company, into a, a company or startup that focuses on food, technology, and social enterprise. Three things, okay. all right? Yeah. Yeah. For food, uh, we are going into areas of disrupting everything that is, that's, that's, that's connected to food, from the way the food is, from the way the ingredients are harvested, from the way the food is packed, with the way the food is packed, the packaging and stuff like that, and how it's delivered to the customers, all right? Um, and it involves technology as well. So this is the point where it gets slightly more interesting. Uh, for instance, like for, 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 for in terms of for packaging, um, the one that you mentioned earlier, we have been going into doing a lot of research about biodegradable packaging because we want to be in an environment-friendly company. Mm-hmm. So we are actually looking into doing a bio- biodegradable packaging made from uh, corn or sugarcane. So it's completely mm-hmm. natural. There's no plastic whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And uh, the most in- interesting thing that we're doing by far is actually that because of the COVID-19, right? Yeah. Everyone's staying at home. Nobody's eating in restaurants, right? So restaurants are doing deliveries at the moment. And I'm one of them because I'm under lockdown in Selangor. So I, I order food quite, quite often. Yes. But <laughs> there's always that worry when you get the food, when you get the food in the packaging, you know? So, you know, because we, we do know that COVID, is the, I mean, they're they are just highly infectious because they, they stay on the surface of, of, of the things that you touch, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So what we do is that we, we, we sanitize the packaging before we eat and then we microwave the food at the same time. So what we have done is actually look into 
uh, some sort of like a coating. So we found this, um, it's, it's called like some sort of like um, antiviral nano coating. So what it does is the fact that uh, with the coating, it can reduce the effectiveness of viruses or bacteria because they can't attach to the packaging. So, and it, it actually works, um, it should work for uh, what they call it against COVID-19 as well because it works against all the, all the within the family of the SARS virus. So, you know, so this is one of the things we have been looking to developing, a biodegradable food packaging that also is effective uh, or rather or should I say resistant towards bacteria and viruses, including COVID-19. So that when you get the food packaging, you're safe, you know. You okay. know of course, you should sanitize, but of course, but the food packaging will ensure the fact yeah. that, you know, that um, the infectious disease doesn't get to your, to your hands or your family when wow. you touch it. So it's, it's safe. Okay. That's and the other part of technology yeah. that, yeah, yeah they're not just that, Patrick. I mean, we're also doing stuff like by, um, with nanotechnology, especially. Mm -hmm. we, can mm -hmm. we can actually um, increase the longevity of the food and stuff like that. You know, we have food packaging that we're looking into whereby uh, you can alert whenever the food packaging, whatever the food inside the packaging is about to go bad, you know, you can get an alert, you can see the color changes and stuff like that. So these are wow, cool stuff awesome, that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> interesting, yeah. You know? yeah. So it's not only, like, oh, not only your fridge talking to you, but also the packaging of the food. Yeah, because I mean, for, for a foodie, I realize, I mean, the most biggest issue for me is always like uh, when, when you buy food, you don't know how fresh it is, you know, the bananas, the mangoes and stuff like that. Sometimes you see something that's fresh, you know, and you pay about, then ring it to it and then you mm. go back home and you open it up and then you, you, you peel up the fruit and say, oh my God, it's rotten. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So I mean, food safety is uh, always a big topic, right? And um, yeah, uh, yeah. like where's the food from and how, how good the food really is. Um, yeah. Maybe what's inside the food really. Yeah, so that, that basically what we're doing right now is you're using technology to disrupt Mm -hmm. all the different air areas of um, food production, food delivery, wow. and, food, you know, awesome, and how we awesome. eat the food and stuff like that, you know. Okay. Uh, so yeah. that's one thing, that's food technology. And also um, social enterprise is something I've always wanted to do uh, because of my experience under my Starbucks story. You know, you, when you lose money, when you, when you lose everything in your life, it gives you a perspective about things. Mm -hmm. It makes you aware that you're not alone. You know, it makes you aware that, okay, you know, um, to be, I, I think I realized when I, when I was going through my Starbucks, so the lesson I've learned is this, this like, stay humble when you have uh, encountered failure or you have made mistakes, stay humble, you know. But once you succeed, you know, once you have reached some sort of form of success, uh, be grateful because you're not there by your own merit or by your own self. There's always people around you. There's always uh, family or friends or business partners that support you. Despite everything that's happened with my Starbucks, sorry, I still have business partners. I still mm -hmm. work with partners because I believe yeah. in the idea of partnership. Yeah. Okay. So okay. because of that idea, because of the uh, because of the sharing and everything, I decided. Okay, uh, I want Foodie Box to be to have a separate brand called Watan that focuses more mm -hmm. on refugees and the poor. You know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So we do a lot of projects and raising funds for for refugees, for food, for for education and stuff like that. You know. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's beautiful. So that's yeah. a nutshell. That's that's Foodie Box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I, uh, I saw about the uh, Vatan. Um, I think there's a LinkedIn profile. I will also share the, the links, how people can support the project. I think it's a, it's yeah. a great idea. Uh, we have not yeah. too much time to talk about uh, this one because I know there's also yeah. like the controversies out there about the, the refugees. But basically, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask one more question, which you, which you partly uh, also answered. Uh, that is the, quen the question about funding, uh, not uh, founding, not funding, sorry, founding uh, companies, right? Um, like even after the, this experience that you had um, that, that cost you a lot, uh, basically, yeah. um, you still are going the way of like uh, with co-founders, right? So there's always the, the debate, like, should you go alone? Should you go with someone else? Should you like... Uh, let the investors come in, you know. Um, so, so what did, did that, I mean, experience back in, what, 2007, 2008, uh, change your mindset? Or what, what, is, what is really the, the idea that you have today when you, when you uh, create new companies or also re your recommendation for um, uh, entrepreneurs? Well, basically, Patrick, I refuse to let whatever bad experience that happened to me back in 2007, you know, 2008 to affect my idea about partnerships. I mean, to me, basically, you, you can't, you, there's no way you can do it alone. Seriously, there's no way you can do it alone. You can have, you can have the idea, you can have basically, maybe you can have the, the skills of, of to execute certain things, but I don't believe the fact that you can do it alone. Uh, I've always believed in the teamwork. Um, I always believe in co-founders. I always believe that um, to 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 have a better perspective on things, you need to have someone else, you know. 
um, to offer a different perspective on things because sometimes you're so narrow-minded, you know, you're so focused on your ideas, you're so focused on the one way of doing things, but sometimes you miss out certain things that you don't see. And that's why I always have co-founders, that's why I always have investors, you know, because um, I, I value the, the feedback from them, you know, they tell me certain things, oh, you know, maybe we can do it this way. And sometimes, Patrick, I don't even mind telling you, sometimes you go into certain trouble, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I mean, I need some money here and stuff like that, you know. And you'd be surprised, you know, some of the people will just, okay, you know, you know what, you know, I'm going to help you out a little bit, you know, so never be afraid to ask for help. And that's a lot of things people don't realize, like, uh, sometimes you feel as though that, oh, you know, when you have a problem, you don't talk to anyone about it, you, you just try to solve it on your own. Please don't do that, you know, because that's the thing, you know, and then, okay, how I come up with investors for uh, shareholders for, yeah, I mean, it's just simple. When I was doing my, my, my burgers deliveries and stuff like that, um, because my customers, when, when, when I wrote about, when they, know, when they found out about my Starbucks story, why, why I started doing the food business, why I lost the company, everything like that, I, there were customers that were transferring more money into the bank account. You know? For instance, like um, the, the, the burgers, maybe they'll cost about 40 ringgit, and then they'll transfer about 100 ringgit. So that's like additional 60 ringgit, you know? So I will like, I will ask them, okay, I mean, I think you made a mistake. I mean, you transfer more than you should. You know what they say, Patrick? They said, you know what, bro? The, the additional money is for you to restart back your business. I know it's not much, you know, but that's, where, that's one way of me helping you out. You know? So it's not just one person. There's so many people that did that, you know? And, yeah. and, and you know what? When I had the idea for Yemen Delicious and I turned into business, I actually asked these people, okay, you know, you know what? You helped me out when I didn't have money. I'm about to incorporate uh, Young Malaysians. Would you like to be my shareholder? Would you like to be my investor? And guess what? They said, yeah, I'll be your shareholder. I want to be part of your journey. So that has always been the way I do business. You know, it went from my first startup to my, to my current startup, you know, from promotion FX studio to Foodie Box. It's always been a collaborative effort, you know. Even, even Foodie Box, it was, I, I don't mind sharing the, this amazing story. I mean, when I had the first idea for Foodie Box in 2016, it was just in my mind, uh, I received a LinkedIn message from one of my contacts, you know, mm -hmm. and he just messaged me and said, hey, Jimmy, how are you? I said, I'm good. Thank you. How are you too? So, and then he just asked me, okay, Jimmy, you know, I mean, we 2016, we, we have so many disruptions. Banking is being disrupted. Technology is being disrupted. AI is being disrupted, you know. What about food? Why are we not doing anything for, about food, you know? So, I told him about my ideas and everything like that. I told him about, you know, let's, let's come up with this foodie box. Let's, let's, let's prepare healthy, fast food and stuff like that. People, we don't have it yet, stuff like that, you know, and everything. And then he, he was like, you know, like listening to me and he told me this, okay, Jimmy, I'm going to see you in two weeks because he's from Oman. I'm mm -hmm. in Malaysia. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, I'll, I'll see you in two weeks. I'll, I'll fly to, to Malaysia to see you. I was like, okay, is this guy serious or not? Okay, I said, okay. And I told him, okay, I'll, I'll see you when I see you. Okay, all right. So, about two weeks after that, I was in Klang. I was actually looking for, uh, I was just trying, I was like looking for high end chicken chop because I was doing some research into it. And I got a phone call on my phone, you know. It's an unknown number. I was like looking at this number. Hey, who is this person? You know, who is calling me? So I pick up the phone. I answered the phone. And he, it was him, you know. He said, hello, Jimmy. How are you? I said, I'm good. I'm good, you know. How are you? I said, I'm very good, Jimmy. Uh, just to let you know, I'm landing in Kuala Lumpur later, uh, later tonight, you know. Can, we, uh, can I see you tomorrow? I'm like, what <laughs> you you are here <laughs> i'll be here in a couple of hours jimmy so you know I, I would love to see you can you just give me your address and anything like that i said okay and you guess what patrick he turned up the next day at my restaurant you know he came wow. down and he nice, spoke nice to yeah. me about it he said hey jimmy tell me about your foodie box concept can i have your burgers that you always posted on linkedin can i have one of your burgers now and everything so he had my burgers he loved it and then he listened to foodie box and everything like that then we had some some discussion and that was it. Within, he left for Oman and within, two, within like two weeks after that, he transferred his, his investment and said, okay, Jimmy, I believe in your idea. I believe in your vision. Uh, this is your initial investment for your business. Get the money, go to India, get started and stuff like that. And that's how wow. it awesome. started. Awesome. Yeah. All by your LinkedIn, you said, right? Yeah. 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 That's it. You know, so that's how <laughs> okay. About. That's great. So, uh, so me and my co-founder and him, we are all equal partners in Foodie Box, you know, wanted each, you know, so because okay. I wanted him, because, he, because of him, you know, we could have started this journey together yeah, yeah. and that's how, that's how we started Foodie Box. So awesome. it's always been collaboration, it's always been partnerships, it's always been co-founders all the way, yeah. Awesome, yeah. Awesome story. I love yeah. that. Uh, I love the yeah. Starbucks story. Also recommend everyone to yeah. read it. Uh, yeah, don't forget about the question. 
uh, Steve yeah. Jobs, Mother Theresa, and, and Buddha. Uh, reach out yeah. to Jimmy, follow his profiles. It's really awesome what he's doing. Uh, also with the social enterprise, uh, Vantan. Um, uh, very inspiring. And um, I can only thank you. Thank you for your time uh, for sharing these uh, awesome stories today. Thank you so much, Patrick, for listening, for the questions and everything like that. And I hope that somehow it inspires you in your journey as well. And, you know, and I'm thankful for the time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you like this uh, stories as much as I did. It inspires you too. And then I see you uh, next week for another episode. Thanks and have a good day. This episode was brought to you by Hopnop. Hopnop is a community of like-minded professionals, freelancers, entrepreneurs, founders, business owners, and local influencers that meet monthly at unique venues to network, mix, and mingle. Live networking events are the best way to meet new people in your city and make new connections. Hopnop, your network is your net worth. Grow your circle of influence.